All right, we're back with another Judge's Report. I'm joined with Judge Daryl Cockrum. I'm Kevin Myers with Granberry Television. Judge, uh, let's start off with the happiest happy event that has happened this week. Rain. Is rain, by gosh. We've had, we had nearly, I guess depending on where you were at in the county, you had somewhere between four and six inches of rain is, what I, is kind of what I'm hearing. That's very true. And I guess everybody was thinking that, uh, you know, it's just going to turn on the faucet. It's going to run for about an hour or two, and we're going to completely fill the lake back up. But unfortunately, reality is we had a very good rain, very good rain. But we only got somewhere between 6 to 12 inches of lake level coming back up. Has that kind of played its yeah, way out now? Yeah, and I've noticed that. Uh, uh, from driving around the, the, the you know the county and visiting different localities, uh, now there's uh, water under docks that haven't been you know had water, and I don't know if it's enough to launch the boats or not, but and our jet skis, but the definitely the lake has come up. And that's, uh, that's certainly movement in the correct direction. Right, exactly, anyway. it's not going down; it's coming up. It's so. coming up. That's great, and it's going to be slow in, in the recovery process. We're going to need about another two or three of these kind of events between now and the spring in order to uh, really recharge the lake quite right. a bit and, and get ready for the uh, summer months. So. I'm not the weatherman, uh, but but uh, I heard on the TV this morning where we have another cool front coming in, so consequently it's gonna kick off some more rain this weekend, so it could be a good, another good thing. Another good thing, all That's right. It. Well, and, and maybe, and, and, and as you say, this time we've soaked into the ground. We had a good soaking rain, and we soaked into the ground, and we should get a lot of runoff on right. the next one and, 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 and really fill up the lake more. Uh, since we're talking about the lake and, and the level of the lake, you know, and, and that just because it's rained and which is everybody wants and, and we're, we're very appreciative for, but it doesn't stop the actions that you guys are taking to continue to advocate for lake and lake levels. What can you tell us in the last uh, in the last four weeks that have been going on? Well, I can tell you in general that uh, you know there's a group of people, Waterfront Homeowner Association, the city, and uh, the county that are uh, trying to uh, put together. We, we, there is a coalition to work on the issues of the lake level. And uh, you know, one of the things that uh, the city came up with, Wayne McKethan, is that they take the most water out of the smallest lake. Even the the, the numbers that come in from uh, from uh, BRA say that you know that they're taking the you know the most water out of here because of, of uh, Squaw Creek and and Luminate, and they have to do that. And I understand that, and that's perfectly okay. But the thing about it is, is that more water should come from like upstream PK and things like that. And that's one of the things that, that we're working on. And I'm, I'm just talking in general now because when, you, when you're when you dealing with a law firm, they, they kind of like you to keep stay, everything. Stay nice and quiet. But stay nice and quiet. Stay under, nice and quiet. But we're, gonna, but we're gonna continue to work on yeah, those kind of right, things. That's right. Those efforts will continue to go they forward. They are, they are. Really. And one of the things that does happen with rain, uh, uh, unfortunately, is if you've got construction projects going on, we have a big construction project at the hospital right. going on. You've got several construction projects going on, and it uh, it sometimes causes a little wrinkle in the in in operations. And I, I know the first one of those projects that is heavily under construction for you is the new uh, emergency operations center, and they're they're coming out of the ground. And That's right. Getting ready to put walls up? Yeah, they, really what they're doing is they're uh, building the forms and everything to pour the tilt walls and they'll be all poured on site. And then uh, they're doing the uh, things like uh, putting in the plumbing for the in uh, termite control, you know, all of that stuff, it has to go in before the concrete actually arrives. So yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing pushing ahead on that, really. And, and uh, you know, it does, is construction look like it continues to be on on I think uh, so I think so maybe a February March it, completion no, day no no it, it, I, I, I'm still fingers crossed for the end of February end of February yeah okay end of February com completion date right and then uh, and then next project that you've been working on is the new animal control facility right right and and, and of course they they're doing the drawings and everything on that and getting all that approved and and you know how, where are all these pins going to go and 
you know how they're going to be laid out and wh what goes inside and everything so it's not it's not as simple as saying let's build let's build a barn or something because you know you've got a lot of things that go inside you know uh, these all of these stainless steel cages and pins and things for the animals go inside and you know where do you get those and who makes them and I know one one place we uh, visited they they uh, used a medical supply company something that kind of came out of your your bay because <laughs> way because the people that uh, they were a little cheaper than the other people so they could get more bang for their buck and in this new facility and we've talked about this more than once is that uh, that you are providing space at, at when we reach 75,000 population which is at least conceivable happen happening at the next census in 2020 right uh, you will be required to have facilities for uh, veterinary services right. and those kind of things so you're at least six years away from that being a requirement you're building that space into this that's true existing building yes yes that'll all be there one of the things that that people you know the why are you doing this why are you doing it well you just brought up the perfect reason and is it that when we get 75,000 and the sheriff really thinks we're closer to 60,000 right now but he's saying that uh, that uh, you know as we grow we're going to have to do this, but anything we do right now, we can do for less money than it's going to cost in eight or ten years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know it's costing us, it's going to cost the county money now, but it'll save us in the long run so that we won't have that big tax bill hitting what will cost us a million. Now we're probably in eight to ten years cost two million. So, you know, this is all planning for the future. And that's the, the, the new EOC, new animal control, all of that's planning for the future. And, and, uh, and with this new facility, there's also, I've seen a couple concept, conceptual drawing. There'll be drive up area that can be locked down and you actually open up the door. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of nice features to, the, to this uh, animal control facility right. that are going to make it nice. Uh, right. uh, Judge, what do, you, what do you see happening? with respect to animal control facility as far as that front end customer experience for that family that wants to come out there and adopt a pet? Well, w one of the things that will be a lot better is, is that people will now have a good, clean, nice smelling area that they can go into and look, look for their animal. So if you have a, one of your children wants a new pet, and you can bring them out there and they can walk along and look at it. And then there's also a visitor's area, like say you wanted a cat, then you could take, you could pick out the one you want and go in there and play with it for a while in, in, inside the facility. So it's not, you know, uh, it's not just, oh, I like that one, take it home and it's a, a mean little rascal and you, <laughs> you have to bring it back or something, you know, so. Yeah, you can actually get to touch and so a lot more of a you know friendly customer Absolutely. service kind of experience. Absolutely, you know one of the things that we heard from every every place that we went was you have to have a visible place. You know if uh, that's the reason that like Plano, Carrollton, Richardson, all of those built built their animal control on a main thoroughfare somewhere where people could see it and go, oh, let, well, there's the animal control. Let's see what they have. And so consequently, the, the adoptions just skyrocket. People, you know, right now people say, you don't even have an animal control. Yes, we do. It's out by, you know, off of Coke Road. It's out, you know, go out 377 and turn. And it's out there by the environmental behind the old barn. And they go, well, I don't know where that is. And so we're trying to provide them a place where, you know, that, that everybody will know it's right off of 51. It's right, you know, they can see it. and go in and visit and it'll be clean and nice and everybody will I hope love it. So. Yeah I, well I did notice that my small protest I noticed it's at the front right outside the front door of the church we go to so when we get through at uh, services on Sunday it'll be right there and the girls will the girls will say yes. let's go by and ad yes. adopt the dog. Yes. Yes all right thank you judge appreciate <laughs> it appreciate you. Uh, well, your uh, kids will love me. Anyway. The kids will love you anyway. <laughs> uh, one of the other projects that you continue to work on is the new recreation center uh, uh, that will be operated by the YMCA, and, and it has been slower going than you would like. It, it absolutely has. Uh, you know, one of the things that 
I think when you have four entities involved, you've got the uh, you've got the school, and you've got the county, and you've got the Y, and then the one that we I kind of forgot about uh, was the people that are going to sell the bonds. So we we worked through and we got you know had our paperwork lined up. Oh boy, this is great. And we sent it over to the bond guy, and he goes, Nah, this won't work. <laughs> you know, and we said, Well, why? And he says, Well, because the way this contract is written is, you know, and I understand the school when they put things in there, they put it in there like we won't be protected. You know, we if we if we're going to be a partner in this and have the land, you know, that we're going to sell to the county to do this, we want to make sure that we're getting a. a auditorium so that that we'll you know have a place for our our kids to swim and so forth and do meets and everything and train so they said you know if you guys don't do it then we want our land back you know and that's the reason that the bond guy says well I can't, I'm not going to loan you 10 million dollars if it can all go back you know and that would be like me saying well I'll, I'll sell you a car but uh, I may just come and get it anytime. But I want your money up front, you know. And you say, wait a minute, I'm not going to do that. And that's the way the, the guy, would, you know. So, I mean, we're, it, it has been excruciatingly slow. And just, you know, and we, we get where we really think it's good. The school thinks it's good. And the county thinks it's good. And then somebody throws a wrench in it. So, you know, I think we're, I think we're there. I think we're there. And, and uh, we've got contracts and everything lined up now. And I just hope and pray that nobody else throws that wrench in there. So. And when it does, when, but as, as has been my experience with most things, once it does get started, construction cycle, you know, eight to ten months, a year, right, a year right, at the right, most, right. it's probably a little more involved project than what right. some of the other ones we're doing. But, uh, you know, a year at the most, and we have a new YMCA facility that's out there uh, uh, and, and ready for use. True. And, and, uh, and so that's a good thing. And, uh, Judge, we finished the Economic Development Conference uh, earlier this month, uh, and, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of the video that we took down there just absolutely didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. But, but, uh, but uh, you know, I got a sense listening to the speaker speak that there's a lot of good going on in Hood County. Hood County economics are very good. Uh, the Texas, the state in general, is in a good position. Uh, North, North Central Texas is in a maybe not quite as successful as the other parts of the states, but still lagging behind, but also lagging behind on, on other things. But in general, everything was very positive, and we're well ahead of the rest of the nation in economic recovery and everything else. We are, but one of the things that we, we saw kind of a little spike in our unemployment, and, uh, and people were going, well, wait a minute, why, why is our unemployment? Because I thought everything was great, right? 1,200 people a day are moving into Texas. 1,200 people. You multiply that out over a year, and that's a lot of folks that are moving in. And consequently, those people have jo have to have jobs. So when you have when you have 1,200 people moving in, and that's going to Im impact your unemployment mm -hmm. or your employment ratio. So you know you you've got a twelve hundred dollar twelve hundred people a day have got to be looking for jobs well not really let's say six hundred because they have children and so forth so six hundred people a day are looking for jobs you know new people and so consequently our numbers kind of creeped up but now they're going back down so we are absorbing those jobs uh, uh, you know absorbing those people you know get finding them jobs finding them good employment people wouldn't be coming here if there weren't jobs people wouldn't be coming here you know, I noticed that people are saying, you know, I, I make, uh, you know, it, this oil and gas that's going on down in South Texas and out in Permian Basin, you know, that, that, that people are making really, really good money. And these are young people that are making really, really good money, uh, you know, in the neighborhood of ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month that they're making working on these in the oil field. And so they're not, they're not burger flipping jobs these are good jobs that people are coming into so you know we're doing but they're not basing their families down in south texas and they're not basing their 
uh, families out in the Permian Basin. They're looking for that quality that's of right. life experience that's that right. they can get here in Hood County. That's what that's what my my takeaway from the thing is is yes, there are there are you know higher paying jobs going on all around the state, but these families are are basing themselves in a place where they've got good schools right. and they've got good golf courses and they've got good air parks and everything else, the whole package. And so we're seeing the population of Hood County continue to grow right. because of the amenities that we have here uh, and, and uh, it can it just continues to be a positive. That's true. You know, we, we uh, talked about the l lake levels going down. We talked about the lake coming up a little bit, but if 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 we don't have a recreational lake here, then people that live on the lake are going to go to the the appraisal board and say, you know, you raised mine five years ago based on living on the lake. Since I don't live on the lake anymore, since I can't use it, I may have the water view, but I don't have water usage. I want you to lower it, and that could be anywhere in the neighborhood of 500 million. Now 500 million dollars in evaluation is five cents on a tax roll. And then they said if you don't, there's approximately 600 million, 652 million dollars worth of new growth that could come. There's still that much property around the lake to be developed. But it's not going to be developed if there's no water. So that's 11 cent swing five down and possibly six up, you know, uh, off our tax rate. That's 11 cent swing in taxes. And that's one thing that I look at. I look at that, uh, you know, and that's one reason we're in this fight uh, for, for the lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about people, you know, living here in Hood County and, uh, and maybe earning their living a little other, some other place. And one of the, and, you know, really honestly haven't heard a whole lot about it lately but it's still out there on the on the radar screen and I know you want to talk about it and that's the Crescent Relief route that right. that, that ability to get to Fort Worth a little bit faster every morning and every evening coming home. That's right uh, one of the things that we really wanted to do was when they had a lot of the oil and uh, the gas ex exploration here there was just a monumental amount of trucks that went through that location and it was a, a dangerous well, there's still a lot of trucks that go through there, still a lot of traffic. The uh, railroad has uh, somewhat slowed up the amount of switching that they have, so it's not as bad as it was, but it's still a problem for people trying to get from Granbury to Fort Worth. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to build a, little, a relief route that would swing up around the north part of Crescent uh, starting out there about where old Granberry Road and going up about a mile, maybe a little less than a mile, nine, eight or nine tenths uh, north of Crescent and coming back in to 377 over in Johnson County. Well, what, what TxDOT wanted us to do, they said, here's what we'll do. We will pay you back 70% 7, of this project over 10 years. You finance it all and, and, then, um, and then we'll, we'll do it. And, and so they, but we said, well, uh, okay. Well, things kind of just rattled around and no, nothing ever happened. And then TxDOT came and said, we got another deal for you. This is deal 103. You had 102 before, this is 103. And what if you would take the money that, that you would, were gonna put in it, which would be a, approximately $11.8 million. And we will take that money and put it with our money and we'll finance the whole thing up front. And so you, and then you, you can take three, four, five years to pay this money back to us at, at 11.8, but you'll be a partner in this. And, and that way you won't have to go out and borrow 38 million to do it. You know, you'll just have to do the 11.8 million. And we said, well, gosh, that's a lot better deal. And so, uh, you know, that, we said, yeah, we'll do that. And so they're working through that right now at TxDOT. And so we'll see where that comes. But and there's also some problems because uh, Crescent uh, pretty much operates off of tax, uh, sales tax. And they said, if we don't have backage roads in there, which used to be frontage roads, but they don't call them that now, it's backage roads. 
and that so people can you know we can have stores and things out there businesses that people can pull off and shop then you know it's going to kill our town it's just going to kill us so we got to kind of work through that right now too so we're 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 doing some negotiating with tech dot and crescent on that so well so some progress at it least is. a little bit of progress yeah. there like you know we were here now we're up here so you, you know we're pushing we're just pushing it ahead you know judge i often say you know when when i was on the school board people ask me quite often I, you know what is it that you learned about being on school board? i said well I, the biggest thing i learned was it takes about 10 meetings of getting nothing done to get to the eleventh one where you actually get everything done, right. you know, and and so it's a lot of it's an exercise and patience and and those kind of things and long range planning and that that allows you to move the county forward or, or the school or any any other uh, operation for that matter. Well, we we certainly appreciate your time, Judge, as we always do. Catch us every two weeks here on Granberry TV for our Judge Daryl Cockram Judges Report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin.